Summer racing at the spa has returned. Welcome horse racing fans to Keats Cash Plays, where we look for value play horses to really spice up those payouts and really light up the tote board. And my name is Keith, and you can find me at the handle each every stride on X Twitter. As you saw in my intro, I'm excited for this week's episode, where summer racing is back at the spa. That's right, Saratoga Racecourse, and the summer meet is already just about to start, actually. And we have uh, really going to talk about these price play potentials. As you've seen on previous episodes, we're getting up here now to 33% with these price horses to get in the money. You know, we're really trying to dig into these PPs and really find these angles of these horses that, you know, maybe there's some form reversal and other uh, connections as well to really get these horses to hopefully, you know, spice up these payouts. And I'm excited to talk about these races including the Grade 3 Kelslo, the Grade 3 Sanford, and the Grade 1 Diana. It's going to be an action-packed card, but I'm not alone. I have a guest this week, and you may have uh, seen him on the Trust the Profits channel, YouTube channel here. He has a show, uh, Doubling Down, and he also looks at various different handicapping angles using tools to really find new trends in, in a winning way. I'd like to welcome a good friend of mine, Colin Sheehan to the show and his debut here on Keith's Cash Plays. How you doing today, Colin? I'm doing great, Keith. Uh, it's been too long. You've you've waited too long to invite me on. So now uh, the pressure has built inside me knowing that you have a show that's been so successful. I like to come on in the beginning when maybe the show's floundering and I have an opportunity to not do so <laughs> well, right? But you got the pressure on me now. So we definitely have to put the work in to make sure we can try and find some price plays for the people out there. And what better weekends then opening weekend up at Saratoga. Uh, it's a little bit strange, as I mentioned on Doubling Down with Matt DeSantis, where I just left Saratoga less than a month ago or a month ago. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of odd. And, and I think that there's a little bit of, a, you know, what do you use with some of the horses coming out of that Belmont Stakes Festival weekend? Um, maybe you get a little bit of an insight of how they might run over mm -hmm. the Saratoga course, uh, which you wouldn't normally get, obviously, uh, when you don't have racing already happening up there. So uh, awesome, excited to be here, and no better place than the spa. I love it. Uh, thank you so much for coming on. And yeah, you're like a, like a horse, like a five-year-old horse making his debut, you know, that uh, now you're going to run well. So I yeah, appreciate you coming on. I know it's been too long, but awesome, man. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I know the uh, Saratoga, I know me and Colin actually are making plans to get up there, uh, you know, first week of uh, August there for Whitney weekend. So really looking forward to that as well. Great. We'll so, yeah. yeah, definitely, man. So uh, appreciate everybody tuning in here. We're going to dive into this card. So this is going to be for uh, Saturday, July 13th, first Saturday at Saratoga. We actually picked a uh, five. So you got to write five value play horses. We're getting uh, you know five to one or higher on the morning line. So we're really trying to create this value and we're going to go over some angles of these horses that kind of stood out on the PPs. And, you know, it's just another uh, stacked racing card. What did you think of, uh, you know, this card in general? I mean, you have a lot of uh, familiar names returning back to Saratoga. Yeah, of course. I mean, you've got two great races uh, in the Sanford and the Diana, two races that I went over on doubling down. But one thing that's big about Saratoga is the two-year-old races that will start coming more fast and furious. And a lot of the maiden special weights, and I think those are some races that you can attack. I'm a lot more comfortable in both races on the turf and, and uh, the two-year-old races, uh, lightly raced horses, because I think sometimes people will gravitate towards uh, horses that have shown just a little bit of success. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that floats up other horses that allows you to get some value uh, similar to what we have here in race one. And that's kind of where I started my attack uh to see what we could come up with here in a five and a half furlong race for maiden philly two-year-olds um and that was kind of that's what i always look forward to going up to saratoga that's right folks yeah no great point you're gonna get these you know the baby races so I always love the baby races and uh you know connections really uh you know you could see a superstar in the you know really debut here we've seen a lot of horses as two-year-olds go on to have great racing careers so I know, Colin, you actually uh, have a horse pointed out in this 
first uh, maiden race here, five and a half furlongs. Uh, you could tell us about that horse. Yeah, the, the the price I went with here, and we'll start off slow with a little six to one. I get higher <laughs> as we go along. I built up to some longer shots, and that's the number three, Maryland's Empire. And this horse is six to one. I actually question if we're going to get six to one. Yeah. I was a little surprised to see the number four, Dare to Breeze, uh, go off with a four to five morning line favorite. Of course, first time out was a main special way to Churchill Downs, finishing third. Uh, in a race where he got a uh, used Equibase speed figure of 74, uh, the winner in that race got an 84. So the race came back hmm. uh, solid enough, you know, and, and I think that maybe the early speed that you're also seeing on this Mark Cassie trained horse with Tyler Gaffleon is intriguing. But like I said, these are two year olds and they're Phillies, and you're putting uh you know four to five is tough to take on a horse second time out in a two-year-old and remember this is only july so these are uh, very immature you know i'll use that word um you know sparing friendly me. way <laughs> they're on the track and they're racing um but i take that with a grain of salt so the three girl lens empire is a horse here trained by dallas stewart who is actually uh fairly successful the last three years with the first time starters on the dirt a positive roi of 120 percent winning at about 16 percent. not much of that has come up at the spa but you get johnny velasquez aboard an angle that sean talked about just last weekend uh johnny v on two-year-olds he's got a, a luminaire from centennial farms who we saw belmont stakes racing festival weekend and um you know it's an angle that you can't go wrong with johnny v uh, on a two-year-old. Yep. Uh, this horse was uh, OBS sale, fifty thousand dollars. Sire out of by Classic Empire, out of a Curlin mare. Um, horse has been working solid enough for me down at Churchill. Um, and French Press is a dam who uh, is winning at sixteen percent lifetime dirt on the sprints. So I think that the breeding there is okay as well for first time out for Curlin's Empire going five and a half furlongs. Um, and that is where I'll start. I think the two, um, I've been paying attention to horses sired by Maximus Mischief. He's one that has put out a lot of horses that win early in their career so far. This horse came out second at Parks, losing by a neck. The speed mm. figures that race came back um, a lot lower, as did it with the one who is another race horse and the number six. Um, so I think you've got a shot here with the three, Girlin's Empire. You told me I need to get a horse to hit the money, hit the board. Uh, so I started out. in Gerland's Empire to get us off started right in race one on Saturday. Yeah, I like it. And you actually, it sounds like you kind of, uh, you're not a huge believer of this stuff. I mean, I know it's a, you know, horse that already raced, but a four to five, uh, morning line favorite, you know, you, you have a lot of other horses here that look intriguing. And now I agree, uh, Dallas Stewart can get these two year olds ready. So you got a good point there. And you know, you just see a lot of good uh, sires here actually using a Catalina Cruiser horse later on. So it's going to be an interesting opener here. And uh, if you can uh, find a price and beat the four to five favorite, you know, especially in horizontal plays, you're going to be off to a great start. Yeah, absolutely. Then race two, I didn't have any options because there really wasn't any horses uh, uh, with the with the edicts that you gave me of finding prices. Uh, we skipped over race two, and I think I'm up next because I had a horse in race three as well. Oh, you did? Okay, let's go to race three then. You could tell us about that horse, and then we are going to have dueling horses. I, I actually have my horses a little later in the card, but it's a really stacked card here. So you could tell us about race two, Colin. Uh, race So race three. Race two, um, yeah, I great. did not have any. Did you have That's anybody right. in race two? No, nah, I know. I was uh, trying to get you to bet it, I guess. So here we go. We got, uh, I know you were passing on race two, so we got race three here. Yep, it's the claiming event for 50K, uh, $80,000 purse. So, yeah, you like a horse in this race, right? I do. And this one wasn't on your official uh, chart, but I'll just mention the number seven, who's an eight to one horse. Cool. Who, uh, I like to see horses that are coming off of multiple claims, and this horse has a little bit of a pattern of look at this a win then a sixth then a win then a third then a win and his last race was a third the number seven uh with dylan davis aboard yeah. who you know you're going to get an office honest effort from uh this horse lost in rome and not to mention that we could be some wet weather coming through up in the new york area this horse has three victories mm -hmm. over the wet turf as well um i just thought uh you know losing irad 
but I like the multiple tr uh, claiming moves and the pattern that I saw. So not on the official sheet I gave you, uh, but race number three, number seven, eight to one is someone that people might want to take a second look at. I love it, Colin. That's actually a first on my show, kind of sneaking in a horse there under the radar. Now I got to actually bet this horse because, look, you got the every every other uh, pattern there, third, first, third. And then, yeah, you got a couple other angles here. Now, yeah, Dylan Davis has been riding, you know, well. So uh, I like it. Lost in Rome. Hopefully be winning for your wallet there. So that's great. Uh, Lost in Rome. Good one to point out there. And then, uh, good. I think we're going to go right to race five at this point, right? You have a horse in there, then I have a horse too. So we're actually dueling in uh, race five. Yeah, you start because I got a great opinion in this race. <laughs> well, I'm going to start off with a bomb here. So I actually, this horse kind of caught my eye. And, you know, I handicap these horses a lot before the morning lines come out. And then this was a 20 to 1 morning line for Devil's Got a Cause. So I'm going to explain to you why. I just thought this horse can kind of stick around at a big price, stick around and in the money. Now this horse is trained by Dallas Stewart. So I know you already mentioned a Dallas Stewart horse and will be ridden by Brian Hernandez Jr. So you get the hot jockey. Now I didn't see a lot of speed in this race at all. Like I, I legit didn't see any front end speed. So that this intrigued me because this horse is going to go. And then we got... Uh, you know, establish hopefully an early position. I didn't see a lot of speed. Now, the only other horse I see in this field that could really give my horse uh, fits on the front end is actually an also eligible horse. Let's go right to him. Natoa, if I'm saying that right. This horse, if this horse gets in the race, I mean, this horse is going to be front end book at speed, but, you know, with Sai as a board, but this horse has got to get in the race first. So that's why I I'm going to stick with my guns with this three, and I'll explain why. Now we got, uh, you know, this horse, as I mentioned with the speed. Now, this horse actually last time chased inside, yielded, but still finished fourth place in an eight-horse field. So I was uh, intrigued that this horse didn't kind of, you know, throw in the wet towel, the, the white towel, I would say. And then, uh, you know, that was six furlongs on the dirt. Now we're trying the turf for the first time. And uh, let's look a little bit further at the PPs here real quick. Now we got a uh, stretching out. Now the breeding, I kind of like the breeding here a little bit on this stretch out. Let's look a little further. All right. We got the breeding here. Yep. I got uh, out of a creative cause, Giants Causeway, and the damn Asina produced two turf winners. So I like that. And Dallas Stewart hits. I know he only hits 2% with winners first time on the turf. But these other angles I liked. And this horse is actually carrying less weight. So I'm not a huge weight guy, but with this front end speed, you're carrying 118. This is a younger horse facing older. So 118 versus a lot of 125s. I like the early speed to kind of stick around. You know, I like the uh, the gate to wire win at the fairgrounds. I know that that was on the dirt, but I, I like that effort in this kind of case. And uh you know, why not? I mean, I just think, you know, Hernandez has got to be aggressive out of the gate. So give me uh, Devils Without a Cause. I know uh, 21 morning line, kind of stick around at the end, uh, kind of spice up the tote board. What do you think, Colin? <laughs> yeah, I, I, it's a, it's definitely a risk. And I think that's why you're seeing 20 to 1 on a horse that hasn't raced over the turf, where you have some horses right. in here that have been racing over the turf. And that was uh, definitely came into my decision making. I also thought I saw a little bit more speed than you. I thought uh, the 1A unit unit econ economics is a horse that's probably going to be on right. the front end. I think the five's best opportunity to win, Suarte, um, is to be on the front end. And then obviously I thought the two would be going out there as well. So I was tending to lean towards a little bit of a horse that A, could be on that front end if, if um, there isn't as much as, like you say, but could also sit off. And I also um, really love the eight. His name is Samburo. And he's gets Manny Franco and Michael Maker. Michael Maker is usually really, really well out of the gate up at Saratoga. So opening weekend, uh, sign me up for Michael Maker. Manny Franco does well uh, going long on the turf. Past years up at the spa, plus 64 ROI, 38% in the money. And I mentioned the weather is going to be wet mm. Thursday, Friday, Saturday should be fine. It's going to be nice. But this horse is three for six over a wet turf. Um, so if the ground gets a little bit of give to it, I think you're getting a nice shot here 
with the eight coming over, uh, you know, a horse, obviously, whenever you see the GB Great Britain and you get a little bit of yeah. wet weather uh, on the turf, that's nothing that I'm going to sneeze at. I also use, uh, as I mentioned, Equibase, and they give you a class rating of the previous races that the horse has run in. He's been running at the allowance company level. But the rating that they gave his last three races were 105, 104, 104. And in that last race, he put up a 103, which absolutely puts him in the company of the rest here in this field. And what I also love, Keith, that me and Matt always talk about, and it's just an angle. People are probably sick of me hearing me talk about this. <laughs> but look at the speed figures in general, at the pattern that this horse has for speed figures, right? I mean, going back to Keeneland in October, 77, um, then he moves up. Uh, to Gulfstream goes 88, 80, 96. And then he starts putting up consistency in the 90s, not only at Gulfstream, but then also again in New York at Aqueduct with a 93 and 95 before coming back in his last race with Irata Board, losing to Battle of Normandy. When Battle of Normandy is a really good turf horse. Big time horse, um, yep. Putting up a 103 uh, in pursuit of that horse. I think the eight here, Sim Boro, uh, is absolutely a horse that you might want to consider uh to hit the hit the board here no a lot of good angles there and uh you bring up the weather that's a great you know you got to always factor that into your handicapping so this could actually really uh you know a little bit of a wet uh you know i know that they give ratings in uh, australia but this could be definitely something that could be more of a yielding turf course so could favor uh Samburu there so good point there colin all right, cool. So we got uh, race five covered there. I know we got some dueling horses. Definitely, uh, we agree, though, there could be a price to be had in that race for race five. And I know you actually uh, like a horse in race seven next. Is that correct? Yeah, and we go back to uh, the two-year-olds. And this time we're going five and a half furlongs on the dirt. This is another sprint up at the spa for Saturday. A lot of horses here that actually haven't raced at all. So you got to do some digging on the pedigree and you have one horse here uh the number five asleep at eight off at eight to one who actually had a pretty good debut first time out finishing second with ricardo santana board for steve asmussen um my price play i landed on the one tough catch um a couple things jumped out at me here for tough catch the first thing that i noticed was that this horse was sired uh, the stud fee on the sire is twelve thousand five hundred. Yet this horse sold for two hundred and eighty thousand at the OBS Spring Sale. Um, it's an angle that I've kind of been keeping my eye on as far as horses under stud fee of twenty five thousand and selling for over two hundred and fifty thousand. Um, Interesting. It's a positive ROI and it's a pretty good success rate hitting on on that as well. But there's some other things that I can throw in here. The works. Um, putting up a 46 and four at Churchill on July 2nd, consistent work, some bullet works in there in the mix. Um, we're, we're landing on Dallas Stewart here, three for three between the two <laughs> of us, uh, on our first three races and Dallas Stewart's a trainer that gets home these, these long prices. And so we're going back to the well there on his first time cool. starter on the dirt angle. You're also getting Luis Saez who is really good at getting horses forwardly placed. And in a race for right. two-year-olds and the first time out, I'd rather have a horse that's going to be forwardly placed than one that necessarily needs to come from behind, especially in a five-and-a-half for a long sprint. And then one last thing I'll mention is the damn try-to-catcher has actually had a couple of first-time starters that have come out to win. Um, and complexity is also very high with first-time starters mm. as a damn Um uh what's the number i had on that yeah. uh five for four five for 14 uh first time starters for complexity so that's a pretty cool. good hit rate um for for a, a sire there so yeah number seven tough catch at eight to one in race seven there you go i like this uh you know you're gonna get an ag aggressive ride there from Saez, i think on the rail and Look at this. I mean, if, you know, Dallas Stewart has a great Saturday, I think, you know, we're going to be no okay, cashing yeah, yeah. and going to the windows, right? <laughs> I love it. You know, I got so excited about your pick, Colin, that I actually uh, skipped over race six here. So let's go. I actually had a horse I, I included today. Uh, we're actually going with five. So five price play potentials here. And let's go right to, uh, no, I know I like your picks there, Colin, but I like, uh, Beach Cruiser. I was mentioning before I have a Catalina Cruiser horse. And uh, this horse is 10 to 1 morning line. So I like that even more. 
And let's uh, just talk about this here real quick. Now you got, uh, she's trained by Christophe Clement. It will be written by Dylan Davis. And the last two weeks, Clement and Davis, yeah, I mean, they're teaming up on fire. I mean, they have two winners, a second and a third in a limited sample size. So they're doing very well together. Now, I know that this horse is kind of disappointed, especially ever since uh, the impressive win November in Aqueduct. But I think this horse could get a good stalking position. Now, you got, I like the cutback in distance here. So I like that. And then you get a, uh, you know, the speed as well. I was talking about the pace scenario. I don't see a lot of speed in this race for this sprint. I know that the uh, the 10 active Congress, we'll go to this horse real quick if I can find him. All right, we'll go uh, right here real quick. Yeah, this horse is going to show speed as well, the 10. So, yep. Yeah, you see these running lines as well. So this is this horse is Ricardo Santana for Bruce Levine. Going to get a you know, really uh, an aggressive ride there, I think, from the outside. Beach Cruiser, I like the post, though. And another example of a lightly raced horse that's carrying less weight than older rivals. So kind of like that as well for this sprint. And then you got uh, Clement has done well in turf sprints this year. He's actually hitting 22% strike rate with winners. And then 20% overall on the turf. So he's a very good uh, turf trainer. The dam's a stakes winner for Beach Cruiser. And uh, I like how this horse broke the maiden. I know I mentioned that just before. I like that race in November at Aqueduct. Hoping for a similar trip. And uh, I said, uh, why not? You know, you got the hot connections, as I mentioned. They're on fire right now. And, you know, 10 to 1 morning line. So that's race 6 for uh, Beach Cruiser. Yeah, it's a good race to take a shot at because you have a lot of horses in here that have actually kind of been inconsistent with the speed figures that they've put up. And so um, if you're looking for a price, you might have an opportunity here where uh, it's similar to why, how I feel in race nine. Um, uh, you have a competitive race with horses that aren't as consistent, which to me lends itself to the opportunity to have some prices coming in. Oh, yeah, we're going to talk about that race for sure. And uh yeah, I mean, as you could tell, folks, I mean, you know, we're talking about these price horses, but you can go in many different directions. I mean, these are the horses that kind of stood out to us, you know, trying to get five to one or higher come post time. So it's interesting uh, to really dive in, especially the first weekend. You kind of don't know, uh, you know, a lot of these horses kind of shipping in. But at the same time, they've been working out a lot, at, you know, at Saratoga, too, ever since the, uh, you know, the Belmont Stakes Festival. So. Great. So we got, uh, I actually have a horse in race eight. Now your next horse is race nine. So I'll uh, quickly talk about my horse that I like here in race eight. So let's pull that up here. This is actually going to be my uh, my favorite price play of the day for me. Now this is a six to one morning line. I really like this horse. Now I was a little worried when I handicapped this horse, uh, Reynolds Channel. So uh, I like this horse number uh, four a lot here. Now we got a uh, this horse, I was worried when I handicapped this horse that this horse was going to be a little chalkier, but six to one. I, I really like that a lot. Now we got a uh, Bill Mott horse for Junior Alvarado. So we got a good combination there. And let's talk about this horse. I mean, there's a few angles here I like. There's the uh, blinkers off angle that really kind of caught my eye here. Now this is the only horse in the field that's actually taking blinkers off. So that's a intriguing thing there. And then if you look back at these previous races with the blinkers off, so you see how these this horse had uh, blinkers, blinkers, not bad efforts, but look at these efforts without the blinkers. I mean, you got really almost in the money at some good maiden special weight races at Keeneland and, and Gulfstream. And you know, you've had uh, Saez on this horse before. So Alvarado is not that much, uh, you know, very similar jockey, I feel. And uh, yeah, I like those races back with the blinkers off. That's kind of caught my eye. And then Bill Mott for Reynolds Channel. As I look here, yep, but he's hitting 25% with this angle of blinkers off. So this was like kind of my main thing with this horse. And hoping this can get this horse to relax a little bit more, kind of a stalking kind of trip. And then uh, previous last two races kind of faded a little quicker. So I think it's a good move. You know, obviously Bill Mott's a uh, tremendous horseman. So he would know a lot more than me with this equipment change, but I think it's a great uh, angle here. 
and then they're putting in a solid work. So we got a solid workout on July 7th. I mean, you got going 47 and three longs, eight out of 98 horses. So this horse is training very well. Uh, we got the nice trainer jockey combo, 19% right now. And so I, I like it. I mean, this was going to be my best uh, cash play bet of the day. Six to one. I really like this horse to get in the money and uh, going to be using this horse in a bunch of tickets. Love it. And Junior, uh, Bill Mott's got two in here. Uh, oh, yep. Frankie DeTore is on the other one. I would always l lend myself towards the Junior Alvarado uh, ridden horse for Bill Mott as those two usually hook up for some success. So uh, a good, good call there by you. Very cool. Thank you. And uh, you know, we're going to keep it moving here. And we got a uh, race nine. I know you uh, have a horse in here. Now I went back and forth with this race and I just, I couldn't land on one horse. I thought it was such a wide open race, race nine. So let's go right to it. Let's uh, talk about it here. Here it is. And uh, what did you think? I mean, did you have a you? I know you have a horse in here. Uh, did you kind of go back and forth with horses, or you kind of zeroed in on one right away? Well, to me, this race is absolutely one of the best shots for a price. And I think you saying that this race was wide open and you couldn't land on one is exactly the reason that I had the same opinion as you. But because of that thought process and because of the goal of your show, I figured I got to find a price in here that I'm going to use because it's going to be frustrating to watch a price come out and at least not take a shot in a race in which yeah. I think there's going to be a, a nice price. Now your favorite is the number eight Irish aces. Who's uh two to one. He switches onto Lasix for the Brendan Walsh barn with Tyler Gaffley own aboard his last race. He put up a huge 119, speed figure there finishing third in the grade three at churchill um but after him if you feel that he's not going to be the one uh, you could go so many different ways here we know uh mm -hmm. phileas fog from our friend the formula the number three is a 12 to one shot uh magical ways i have some angles on with 92 90s uh switching yeah. over the turf over the last two races um is a possibility there i was between the nine and the ten as far as my choice here for this show um i think you could really go with either of those if you wanted a sixth and seventh pick since i gave you one early uh <laughs> you know i think the nine's a horse that can get out early for that michael maker barn that i talked about being um hot early at at saratoga with louis saias yeah. aboard um but i did ultimately land on the number 10 Talking candy out of the Sherry DeVoe barn. Now, I do have some concerns here. The horse hasn't raced since uh, September 1st. Um, so it was absolutely coming in off the layoff. Finished second to Carl Spackler that day. Carl Spackler was a horse I loved on Belmont Racing Festival weekend who let me down. He was my my second big pick that weekend after Chili Flag, who did not let me down out of the, <laughs> the Chad barn. Um you know, horses has been working consistently, um, so at least I know. And, and she's been a uh, very capable trainer, having a lot of success lately. Um, I went back to looking at those speed figures that were increasing. Obviously, he's going to need to increase again here as a four-year-old. Um, but a $400,000 purchase, you expect to think that uh, a horse like that, who they put up that money for, has the talent. And hopefully um, at 10 to 1... Uh, taking candy will be the one out of this race that I am intrigued by. And again, I'm going to mention it has raced twice over a wet surface on the turf and has a victory in a second place. Um, so as Good you point. can see, the trend of some of my picks today are, are expecting at least that some of that moisture will still be around and, and be in, have an impact, not necessarily to take them off the turf. That would be the worst case scenario for us. Mm. Um, but taking candy in a pace that I expect, you know, it looks to me to be somewhat of a slow pace. Um, I think that the 10 uh, is a horse that has absolutely, especially in the last one, shown the ability to be on the front end. So uh, taking candy for me uh, in race nine. I like it. No, I, I think it's a good pick. I was looking at this horse and, you know, we know the twirling candies are, you know, they're a versatile type sire. So it's something that, you know, this horse could get a good trip. 
I mean, as I was saying before, I really thought that this was such a wide open race. I, I was even looking at this Georgie W horse here and I rides actually named on a MTO. So, uh, and then if I was reading the PPs, right, it looks like the MTO was IRAD's first choice. And then Georgie W was his second choice. So it was a little, you know, a little, uh, thrown off by that. So I, I kind of, in the end, I just thought, you know, this, this race, as you mentioned, though, you have a good point there, Colin. I mean, we're trying to create value with these price horses. You just, I'm glad that you are, are taking the plunge here. Cause this is a, uh, this was a challenging race for me, for sure. I, I think that it, this could be the race to really pay out. And, uh, I'm glad that you have a horse there. I think it's a uh, good points that you have on that horse. Good price to get people started on that late pick four. All right, cool. So that actually leads us to the, uh, to the Diana. This is going to be the, uh, the big one here. We'll uh, show you the field here. And I thought it was a really stacked uh, race here that you can go a couple of different directions. I mean, you have five Chad Brown trainees here. So I was trying to try to beat the, uh, the five headed monster of uh, Chad Brown here. And uh, I know you have a horse. We have, two different horses that we're going to talk about here. If you want to uh, see, you want to start us off here as a guest or? Absolutely. Honest? I mean, it's a great competitive edition. Um, you get the last year's winner, White Beam, returning. Yep. Um, a nice healthy field of 10. And it's nice to see, although there's five Chads in there, uh, it's good to see other trainers taking a shot, uh, knowing that they, you know, it's – if you throw five more other horses in the race, that doesn't necessarily mean he's going to just keep winning them all. Um, I think that Didia, as I was said on doubling down, um, is my top choice in this race. Um, Didia is such a cool horse. Didia and Chili Flag are right now probably my one, two as, as favorite horses. And part of that comes out of the, the stake, the Belmont Stakes Racing Festival. Um, but even going into that, I mean, what has Didia done wrong? This horse just always right. shows up. Um, and incredible mare yeah why, why would you expect uh her not to this weekend i mean just just you, you keep uh thinking that she may be not be there for you right. and it comes through and you know one thing i looked at is i'm putting a lot more stock into that new york stakes race over the um belmont stakes weekend as opposed to the other race where uh, all these other horses are coming out of, which was the Justa game. The Justa game uh, statistics and speed figures, the winner in that race got a 97, okay? The winner, Chili Flag, got a 97 in the Justa game. The loser in the New York Stakes got 100. So every other horse in the New wow. York State got above 100, including, uh, you know, Didier, who got that 100 in 13 and so my price pay is going to go right back to the only other horse coming out of that race which is the number eight nisi marie um out of the butch reed barn with uh, louis sayas aboard tracked really well closing in that last race i know that the trip was you know probably ideal for that particular uh horse on that day um it was a you know a sprint to the end there as uh as Didier was able to, to, to pull away. Um, Nicey Marie is a horse that I'm absolutely interested in, in, in this stakes, you know, white beam is a horse who's had decreasing sp speed figures. He was actually last win was that Diana a year ago. Mm, yeah. Um, so to me, I wasn't really interested. I think fluffy socks is overmatched. Um, and uh, I was Didier chili flag in, in Nisi Marie. So those are my three. And uh, based on the rules of your show, Nisi Marie ends up being my pick here to hit the board. <laughs> I love it. No, it's, um, you know, it's great to talk insight about the competitors. It's just such a talented group of horses and it's uh, be an amazing race. I mean, I really think that we're going to see a great effort by a lot of these horses. As you mentioned, Didier, it's just every single time they think this horse is not going to win. I mean, she just, that's what the great horses do. I mean, they just find a way to get it done. And uh, so many great wins for this horse. So with that being said, I'm actually going to go with your angle here, Colin, with the uh, mission of joy. I, I thought that this horse was interesting to me. Uh, 10 to 1 morning line. 
And uh, with this horse now, I know that um, there's an MTO in this race, uh, Venti Valentine. Kind of like that horse a little bit too, uh, if that horse can kind of get in somehow. But let's go back to my pick here, uh, Mission of Joy. Now you got uh, Johnny V in the irons for Grand Motion. And this horse finally gets a, a better post to work with. I mean, this horse has literally been on the rail, the 10 post, as you see here in the PPs. Let's look a little closer. I mean, we got literally... One on the rail, 10, 10, 1. Now you got a 7, but look, at that was a good effort there at Colonial in the stakes race. Now I know that this horse hasn't won in a year and uh, finished third last time, but you got a, a good post to work with here. Now this is the third start off of the layoff, and I think that this is the uh, the mile and one eighth distance. I, I like this distance for this horse. You know, it's the best speed figure to date is at this distance. And uh, I just thought, um, you know, as far as this, I mean, I just, I like that fit there. And then going longer, we've talked about it, Colin. I've talked about it on your doubling down show. You know, the kitten joys going longer on the turf. Another angle there that seems, to, I learned it from you and uh, seems they do well. And this is it. I mean, we're trying to get this money, you know, this uh, horse in the money here to hopefully spice it up. Now I know Chili Flag is a uh, a horse that's on fire right now has won the last couple of races like Didia too, but we're trying to create this value and mission of joy has been, uh, I mean, a lot of these horses have been in grade ones and grade twos recently, but this horse is not heads with a lot of, you know, white beam, as I mentioned, a lot of these horses as well. So thought it was an interesting horse and Graham's motions barn has gotten hot the last few weeks. So I'm hoping to capitalize on that. And then uh, the only other point I have here for Missions Joy is, if you look back, yeah, the regret stakes at Churchill. I know that that was uh, 13 months ago, but this horse could be trending in the right way. Now, we've seen Johnny V has been staying on this horse, so got to get in the money here, and I, I like it, uh, Mission of Joy. So it's going to be a great addition of the uh, Diana stakes. Uh, any final thoughts on the big field here? Well, for one thing, uh, just you, you mentioned Kittens of Joy. With Race Lens at Equibase, you can quickly parse through some data. So as you were talking, I did. Kittens Joy up at Saratoga in turf routes, 46% in the money, positive ROI. So um, it backs it up. You know, I, I always like to, when I hear people talk about angles now, start to running it through Race Lens to see if the data backs up yeah. what maybe we have these biases because i definitely have had always had it in my head i love kittens joy long on the turf well let's go in and check those stats and make sure that it actually backs up what you what you're thinking about um and so yeah I, I, you know matt desantis on my show liked missions of joy as well said you could draw a line through the race two back um i just i'm just fading that race i'm fading the just a game based upon the equibase speed figures because i feel on Big days and in big races like this, they've uh, I've really gotten much better at handicapping by trusting them. I feel like I see the patterns a little bit better. And when I see a race where the winner, like I had mentioned, gets a 97, and then the other race that the two of the horses are coming into, the loser got a 100. Um, you know, that's a little bit of where I'm basing my, my strategy going into this race, and we'll take the one that is the longer shot in the eight. Oh, I get, I'm really looking forward to the Diana. I mean, this is for so talented fillies and mares. So it's going to be a amazing addition there of the Diana. So appreciate that, Colin. And then I just did want to you, give you a, yeah. yeah you you, I know you're going to the last race, but did you look at yeah. the Stanford at all? And did you see Fierceness's brother here on the one is uh, yeah, your look. six to five favorite? Do you think he is a little susceptible or um, do you think Fierceness's uh, skill is going to rub off? It's a tough, I mean, it's like, this was another one I, I looked at for, for my format of my show. And I just thought, you know, this, this horse for uh Rapoli, I know it's a city of light horse that, uh, you know, it's really got the connections, you know, I mean, you got Pletcher, what do they say with these starters? I mean, this is a horse that had a good figure on debut. I mean, that is a nice 81 echo base speed figure on debut. I mean, that is an impressive debut but, I mean, you have these other horses here, too, that could jump up as well. Was there a horse that maybe kind of caught your eye, too? So I was hoping, uh, you know, the morning line on Studley Do-Right was going to be uh, match enough to be in your show. Um, oh, I think this that, is yeah. a horse here who's uh, 
back-to-back impressive performances. But what I was impressed about is, A, I wanted to get this in, that he has the win over the Saratoga surface because of that Belmont Stakes weekend. And so we've got two-year-olds here coming up. All of them are trying Saratoga for the first time, but not Studley Do-Right, who is again shipping up for Laurel. And I would say about one Mente, Mente, sorry, uh, the fierceness brother, he was tiring in that race, and he barely beat uh, Kowil, Kowil, Colloquial. I'm having a hard time he pronouncing did, He did better than me, yeah. Um, <laughs> that race was at five furlongs. This race to, on this day is six furlongs. So I'd rather have Studley mm. Do-Right, who has a victory over the surface at five and a half furlongs, than a horse that maybe didn't necessarily look like he wanted that extra distance on that particular day. Of course, we know Fierceness, uh, the talent he has, and maybe Mente has that some of and T has some of that as well, but uh, I think Studley do right at seven to two is a nice little horse in there. So uh, we'll let you get to the get out race for all of our, <laughs> when all of our picks are wrong. You're going to come through and save us. I know you're holding your breath for the, uh, the last race. I mean, what a stack card this is. So I just figured, you know, we were going to go five each and, you know, I, it, this is a horse that kind of caught my eye and I know we're getting a six to one morning line and, you know, you gotta love it. It's a uh, you know sugar Rick, sugar gray Leonard. It's a funny name there. Now this horse, it's been a while in between drinks for this horse. I mean this horse has gone off form, but if you look back at the summer racing last year at the spa, I mean this horse was winning with Irad aboard and you know in the money even with Jose and and uh, Luis aboard as well. So it's been a while. Rick Dutro, uh, the trainer, does well in a limited size uh, with these kind of turf runners. He does hit at 24% right now with the wind strike. You know, he doesn't have a lot of turf runners, but it's something to keep an eye on. I mean, he's doing well. And this horse has had gait issues recently. So let's look at it real quick. I mean, you got uh, a lot of step slow, stumbling, brushing at the gate. So I'm hoping Irad kind of caught my eye that Irad jumped on this horse now who can get a little aggressive out of the gate. We know that. So this horse could hopefully get a, an aggressive ride. And I just thought in the nightcap, why not? I mean, it was uh, bred well here. And Dutro uh, does well sometimes with these horses that kind of uh, are projects, right? And then he kind of turns them around a little bit. So give me Sugar Gray Leonard. I'm going to be playing this horse in a lot of horizontals and uh, including them in exotics. So did you have any thoughts in, in the get out race? I actually haven't looked at the get out race, so I, I don't. I, uh, I made it through the 11, and I said I have my five, so I didn't even bother to look through the last right. one. Because we're going to hit all the early ones, Keith. That's it. I mean, appreciate everybody joining us here. So we're going to give you a quick uh, recap. I mean, we talked all about these horses. I know Colin's even sprinkling other money horses. So hopefully you watch the whole show, because if you miss one of those horses, I'm going to be betting those as well. And uh, did you have maybe uh, like a, a best uh, best bet as a price horse uh, come Saturday at Saratoga? Uh, <laughs> good question. That's a tricky one. I would say for a win um, or yeah. just to get the board. Uh, we'll talk about a win, I guess, right? Yeah. Ooh, a win. If I had to pick one of these to win, uh, I don't know that Nisi Marie can beat Didia. I think taking Candy's race is too – that race is too in deep. Um, I would go either with the race one or the race five pick race one girl in empire, cool. I think really has a great shot and I'm pretty high on, um, Samburo. So I would go with one of those if I had to, and if you're making me pick one, I'll go with the number three in race one. Awesome. I love it. No, that's a good, I like that horse there. And, uh, you know, Reynolds channel, as I mentioned before, I, I like this, uh, horse as well to get a nice trip. So. Appreciate uh, everybody joining us here. It's a you know action packed car. We get you know at least five horses each to consider come post time. And thank you, Colin, for joining. I know that you're making your debut here on uh, Keats Cash Plays. And and tell everybody where they could uh, find you and what's going on with you. Well, right here on Trust the Profits, baby, hit that like and subscribe button. Doubling down is out. Formula did the full field run through. Yep. Um, uh, Jessica is working on a pedigree puzzle. She had mentioned that should be coming out soon as well. So the content's not stopping, even though the triple crown is over and we're just gearing up. I mean, the start of Saratoga, the Saratoga to me is the epitome of summer. So summer's officially here now. The weather's nice. The horse racing is superb. 
And then you got the two-year-olds that are starting to make the turn uh, into the fall for next year's Derby. So we're already, you know, the, the cyclical part of the sport is so awesome where you just naturally fall into what's next and what's great, right? It's like right into Saratoga, then you go right into Breeders' Cup, then you get the holidays, and then we're right back into the Kentucky Derby swing. So um, plenty of content and plenty of stuff to be excited for. If you're up at Whitney Weekend, please find uh, me and Keith and Tim and Sean and uh, the whole crew will be there. So I uh, hope to see all of you as well. And I got a Loggins hat today, Keith. So um, oh, man. I have my Loggins hat specifically for Friday of Whitney Weekend. I love it, man. That's awesome. I'm going to be following along on uh, the story there with Loggins as far as a sire. I think, you know, I agree. I think that's uh, the potential. The sky's the limit, right, with this horse. And, you know, if he can uh, produce babies the way that he ran, uh, you know, that that tough, tough as nails running style. I mean, that's yeah, great. A little bit more sound, though, right? <laughs> I know. I know. We uh, wish the best for these horses. And, and thank you, uh, everybody, for tuning in and you know, remember to hit the like button and subscribe to trust the profits. As Colin said, the, the content's not going to stop and we're here to uh, give you this great content. So give us some feedback and, and tell us who you like Saturday at Saratoga. And until then, I hope you have a, a winning day and you know, keep cashing and keep it moving. Take care now. Good luck. <laughs> Love to see it. Love to see it. See it.